So, it's been a little while since the last time I've looked at how Microsoft is promoting their desktop application uh, visualization uh, technologies. So, decided to do a little research. Last time I used it, it was all WPF, Windows Presentation Framework. Uh, but now, it uh, looks like we have some new options, uh, some holdovers from WPF. But I was just taking a look at this. Uh, so, we have uh, XAML uh, for the Universal Windows platform. Uh, I guess with Windows 8 and Windows 10, we have some new features, uh, especially with the .NET Framework 4.62. And so I wanted to create a little application, see how that works, and decided to do a Tron-inspired dial and so I'm going to walk you through that in the spirit of using SVGs or vector graphics as much as possible in all of my applications. Kind of start off with this. It's a very uh, simple uh, path, kind of a circle with a triangle that I attach to it. And in order to get the path, I do a file, export as, uh, SVG. And the only thing I really care about uh, in this case is to look at the path code. So you can click the uh, show code button. If you scroll over a little bit, you can see where the actual path starts. It's this D value and you can see the, uh, the path there. So very simple uh, path. I have already copied this into the application. Just showing you how I did that. Uh, so in the application, uh, we're now looking at Microsoft's Blend for Visual Studio. Uh, the idea with Blend is to try to make the uh, incorporation of graphics and code a bit easier for designers. Uh, in my opinion, it seems at the same level of complexity as normal Visual Studio, but the layout for your control assets and uh, some of the workflow here is, I guess, a little bit better for designers. Uh, but that's what we have. So uh, what we have here is I have a foundation image within this grid. And you can see that here, um, this image, the box bit. See this image. See the outline here. Um, you also see the XAML, the XAML uh, below. And the source for that, again, I have this JPEG image. Um, and that also shows up in your assets. Let's see here. So if I look in media, there we go. You can see I have that JPEG. Uh, and that becomes an option when you drop in uh, the image control. So that's what we have here. And if I look over at the properties, um, you can see you can control things like how the fill happens. You have some options here. Uh, very straightforward for the images. Uh, I also have a slider. Uh, slider control is down here. I mean, you, can, you might be able to see that there is an effect on, on these things, uh, kind of this glow effect. Um, and if we look in this tree view here, you can see the effect here. If I select the effect, I can look at the properties in the properties area. And basically, I, I change the properties so I just get a nice little glow effect for each one of these things. Uh, the path, right, kind of back to the original uh, description of the SVGs and the path. Uh, if you look at that path element, uh, this is the path that I copied from Adobe Illustrator, uh, the very simple graphic that I drew. And of course, what's nice is with a path, you can then set all of the appearance attributes um, within the tool that you're using that SVG. Um, so I have some very uh, simple things in here. And I have that drop shadow effect, which is giving me that nice little glow here. All right, so that is the path. And notice there's also a label in here. What I was trying to do with this dial 
is simply bind the change uh, the changes to the slider, bind those to the rotation property of my path. And you can see that that is done in here. If you look inside of label, there's a content attribute. And right here, we declare a binding. We basically say the value of the element slider uh, is what this value will change to. Um, and up here in the, I'm sorry, up here in the path, we also declare a binding, and it's the transform for the rotation. There we go. So rotate transform, and the angle is going to be bound to the value of the element slider. So if I actually click on my slider right here, you can see that its name is slider, right? That's the control I'm referencing. The idea is as it's changing, the rotation of my path will change. And then I'm also going to change the value of this label to show what the value of uh, the slider is. Uh, one extra thing I want to note here on the label is that because we are getting a number value or numeric value from the slider as it changes, I have to apply a content string formatter. Um, N0 basically means that from the decimal number that comes back, we're not going to show any of the decimal or parts of the number or the fractional uh, decimal uh, parts of the number. And if I run this project, five, So here we go. As I move the slider, we'll go from 0 to 360. You can kind of see how that binding works. Everything looks very smooth. And that is about it for this project. I also posted the source code for this project on uh, GitHub. So if you're interested in how bindings work, how uh, SVG uh, paths work, again, within the uh, new Microsoft XAML sort of uh, way of doing things, there you go. Thank you.